Staff Sergeant Joseph Biggs, 82nd Airborne uh, Combat in Iraq, Afghanistan. And uh, it was, what, 2008 he first uh, was uh, embedded with a uh, well-known war reporter, uh, certainly now, and one of the editors over at Rolling Stone magazine, uh, who really brought down uh, one of the top generals. And, uh, of course, that was McChrystal. Now, a few weeks ago, his car, most of you know the story, blew up while driving down the street, and the engine shot down the road the other direction. And I talked to a um, well-known uh, reporter, Nomi Prince, who lives nearby. She went and looked at it. She said the tree wasn't even really damaged. And it looked like from the photos, it came up to rest against it. Then we learned he was getting death threats. Hours before he said, I'm going to go into hiding off the radar, I've got my biggest story ever. I'm, listen, if I ever come on here and say, I'm getting threats, I'm going off the radar, I'm about to break my biggest story ever, and my car blows up, man, I want an investigation. And I said on air a few weeks ago, I said, it's a very low probability that this wasn't some type of car bomb. Just from all the experts and military people I had on days after that looked at it. Then... I said, we need to go talk to the police and the fire department, and if they're told not to talk to people, and I said this on air over and over again, and if they try to suppress the police reports, the first reports, I said, ladies and gentlemen, it means national security pressure was put on them. This is NDAA type stuff. And again, ladies and gentlemen, I happen to know through family connections and things that there have been federal hit teams in this country, they don't even have to hire organized crime for a very long time. I'm going to leave it at that because i got family that gets mad if I talk about it, but I've told the story before. And the whole issue here is the public is very naive. Now, San Diego and other TV stations went, and, and because they'd heard our show and others, and said, well, the family said they wanted an investigation, and his friends were questioning. We just wanted to learn the details. And they even had to apologize on one of the newscasts and say, we don't want to be conspiracy theorists. They'd be like Caesar stabbed 100 times you know, 2,000 years ago, and people say, oh, it's a conspiracy theory that he was murdered. Uh, when you're to the point in this country where the media barely decides to do any of its job and has to apologize, you're in trouble. And the media's like, it's so strange. They usually give us their police reports. They're acting very strange. They've been told, here's the key, not to talk. They're like, by who? And they're like, we're not going to tell you, but we're scared. Just like the family scared and Staff Sergeant Biggs, who we're about to go to, he said a few weeks ago when he went on Fox, they tried to belittle him and, you know, say, well, we don't want to hear conspiracies. Just when he said, hey, it looks strange to me. It should be investigated. How evil it should be investigated. He said, look, the family, I've been to the funeral. They're, you know, they're scared, but you know, the, the wife is saying she wants to bring down whoever did this. You'd think that'd be national news. No news coverage of him saying that on this show two weeks later. Okay? So understand, ladies and gentlemen, the widow saying she thinks there might be something going on and she wants to bring down whoever did this and she, you know, she's going to fight this somehow. That would be national news. The media normally in the old days, just even 20 years ago, 10 years ago, if one of their people got killed, everybody investigated it out of a sense of camaraderie, basic common sense. We better hang together or hang separate. So I can tell you right now, it's about 99% in my educated research view that he was murdered. Uh, and, I mean, you add it all together, you'd be nuts to not think that's where this is going. And Big said, he said, look, I'm going to go public. Because other people are scared and won't speak out. I'm going to do this. He'd do this for me. And I tell you, it freaks me out that there are so many cowards in this country. Uh, and that something that was commonplace in the old days, I've studied history, is now so rare. But we commend you, Staff Sergeant Biggs, for being a good friend, a good American, and, and investigating. And I think a lot of credence has been added to your questioning now. Um, what do you think of everything that's transpired since we talked a week and a half ago, sir? Yeah, there's a lot of crazy things been popping up. Um, I found out recently that the LAPD actually made a stop by Michael's house just a couple of days prior. And uh, they were spotted there. He was also spotted looking under his car a few days prior. So that in itself is pretty, uh, pretty fishy, along with the fact that I called the LAPD and they told me there's nothing they can do. They, they wouldn't tell me anything. And, and it seemed as, as soon as I brought up Michael's name, they all kind of just got hush-hush and just acted a bit, you know, uneased.
Well, I'd say so. By helping cover up, they begin to enter the galaxy of uh, being accomplices. Wow. Uh, walk through this. This is really newsworthy for everyone in the state of this country. Uh, I talked to you via text a few days ago. You said you were going to be talking to the police and calling the fire department. Walk through who you called, what happened, what unfolded. Well, I called and uh, I called uh, the coroner too to ask about where the body was, and they said that they had released it a while back. But when I'd spoken to the family, they hadn't received it yet. So that was pretty odd. And then when I called the LAPD and asked for a report, um, I said, "What steps do I need to go through to uh, file to get a copy of the police report on Michael Hastings' death?" And then all of a sudden, they're like, "Well, we need to transfer you." And then someone told me, well, we can't help you with this. And it just kind of got pushed around. I went from one person's call to another. and uh, Oh, that's not newsworthy that the body's missing. Obviously, they're going to have to because you've, you've been in combat. You, As you said, you've been in an IED. Uh, couldn't you well, well, test not, and, 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 well, and pick up the residue of an explosive? Um, well, what happened was is they ended up uh, apparently cremating the body. Oh, whoa, you hadn't dropped them. Oh, they decided to do that. Yeah, I'm not sure. I haven't heard back from his wife yet if that's what they wanted. But, I mean, I'm pretty sure that's something that he wouldn't have wanted. I'm pretty sure, I mean, anybody would want their family to have an actual funeral. And, and you just that. are dropping bombshell after bombshell on me. Again, you're, you're a good friend. You're the guy that released the email uh, that he was being, he was going into hiding and being, uh, you know, the, the, the FBI was visiting people. Then they lied and said they weren't. Tell us who, to, who told you that the police went by his house and that, uh, and that he was seen looking under his car. I got that from a news group out of L.A. Wow. Man, I tell you, uh, when was the last time you, you physically talked to him? I mean, over the phone or in person rather than email? Uh, Michael? Yes. Uh, probably three months ago. You, I mean, you knew him so well, and he was embedded with you for a long time. Uh, and he's one of the guys, you know, he sent this email to. What do you think he would be saying now if this would have happened to another investigative journalist like himself? Um, I'm sure he'd be on uh, the media or in the in the news as much as possible trying to keep this in the light and not have it seem so swept away. It seems like it, you know that when I was on uh, Fox with Megan, I think that aired maybe one time and that was it. I mean, that was it. If he didn't watch it at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, who was watching the news then? You know, most of the time everyone's listening to the radio, so not many even people even got to see that. It just seemed like everyone just kind of just wanted to hear about it, and then they wanted to forget about it as soon as possible. And I know that's something he would keep from happening. He'd keep running in his mouth. He'd keep digging in, opening the, the wounds up, and making people have to look and find out what's going on. You know, Obama signed the NDAA, and he's openly said, and so is a Big Sis a Napolitano, the head of Homeland Security, that, that the main threat is not al-Qaeda now for Homeland Security, that it is Tea Partiers, Libertarians, Conservatives, but also anti-war people, basically anybody with a social conscience. And then it, the NDAA really says they can disappear whoever they want and that they'll target and kill any American they want. Uh, and so I don't think they've ever had it on paper saying that. And we're seeing a real uptick in mysterious deaths of whistleblowers and people. Um, I... Uh, Man, I tell you, I, you said your gut told you something was wrong early on. Now, what does this whole picture tell you, Staff Sergeant Biggs? Well, the government's doing some shady stuff. I mean, he was on to something and enough to where they want to quiet L.A. up. You know what makes me think about, like, Pat Tillman? He was going to come back and blow the whistle, and look what happened to him. Yeah, it's ridiculous. It's the same thing all over again. What do guys in the military say about Pat Tillman? Because he, I guess he was a ranger, you're a ranger. No, uh, I'm not a ranger. Oh, you were an airborne? Yeah, 82nd Airborne. Okay. But, but I mean, uh, what did the guys in the Army say about it's, Tillman? Most people tried not to talk about it because you don't want to even think about the fact that your own government's going to kill you and cover it up and just amount to nothing. You still try to hold on to some positive ounce of hope when you're in combat and think that, you know, everything's going to be all right. Well, what's going to happen if a lot of people start dying like this? I think there'll be some pushback. So, Well, I mean, if my car blows up, then I guess we all know uh, <laughs> they better start looking around. Well, you know, I'm, buddy, we need to actually think about that. I think if we went out to Los Angeles, 
Maybe we should go out to Los Angeles together. I'm not, I don't think you're afraid. I'm not afraid. I'm actually afraid of giving in to this fear. I, I, and, and if the family invited me, I will go and investigate. Well, I'll jump in, I'll jump in anyone's face. I don't care. <laughs> I want to find out what's going on, too. I'll go to L.A. with you in a second. Well, I think we, I mean, you're his friend, so you've got some jurisdiction to do it. I, 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 I'm, I've got his wife's contact info or email and the the Twitter. I know you've got her number and stuff, but I, I get people having kids. This is getting scary, wanting to give it some space. You know, she says she wants to bring down who did it, but but I, I, I'm not expecting a woman to you know charge around, but I've told she has a lot of courage uh, by you and others. Uh, I, I just I just feel like I'm going to let myself down if we don't do something about this because... You see everybody, I mean, there's a lot of people, I've seen a big outcry lately, a lot of emails from people saying that they, you know, that they themselves are investigative reporters, journalists who had looked up to Michael, and people from Dublin to China are all, you know, really wanting to know what's going on, but it's the people right here that, you know, we need to get together and we need to do something. Well, I'll, you know, his wife is saying that she didn't know anything he was investigating, but she knows it wasn't about you know, one of the uh, friends of... Um, the CIA director, former uh, uh, General Petraeus, she, she may know something that she doesn't think is important, but they know. And I, I'm not trying to like in, threaten her with the truth into going public. But if I was her, I'd be running around screaming bloody murder. Uh, because that, as Jim Garrison said in the Kennedy investigation, that's the safest thing to do. And he obviously knew that. That's why he was going into hiding to get a new story out quickly. Do you have any ideas, or is anybody at the funeral giving you ideas of what it was? Because for our own safety, we need to get all this out now. It's the CIA. That's the exact words I was told. Like I said last time, she, Michael told her that she wasn't going to tell, he wasn't going to tell her anything any further into that matter. But he did tell a lawyer. He and did? The, the, he, he told everything to a lawyer, and it's not the WikiLeaks lawyer. So I still don't know where that came from. Okay, so she told you that or somebody at the funeral? She told me that. Boy, that lawyer is... I'd like to know who that lawyer is because that... that Well, they've obviously got him surveilled, but he knows how to do countermeasures. That lawyer needs to be investigated. I'm not saying the lawyer's involved. We don't know who they are yet, but I'm telling you, either that person would be telling it all or they're, they're out of their mind. See, I had the D.C. madam on. I've had a bunch of people on, and they kill them like a month later. I mean, I've, I've lived through this, and well, I'm just... Probably the only way to get any information out of the police and things like that. I mean, the only way to get information anytime when you can't get something to sue somebody, something the, from what I've been told, the easiest way to get information is just start a lawsuit, sue somebody, and then the information has to be brought to light. That's right. But nowadays, uh, it's so corrupt, they'll put out fake stuff. But that happened with the Oklahoma City bombing. That's what we found out. Southern Poverty Law Center was in the Catbird seat there at uh, Elohim Center. <clears throat> along with the uh, deputy attorney general, who's now the attorney general. Uh, look, they're just gangsters. And I, and I can't believe the LAPD is that corrupt and the fire department is that cowardly that they wouldn't be speaking out. I mean, it's this culture of fear that allows these bad guys to take over. Yeah. Everyone's scared. People want to talk, but no one wants to take that, that step to actually make something happen. Most people just want to go through their lives and pretend like everything's fine and they don't really want to see, open that curtain and see what's really going on back there. But don't they get that that lets the evil take over when they have that attitude? Most people are just, like you've said before, sheeples. They don't care. As long as they get their, their paycheck every other week and their ACs on and their cell phones work and they get to play little video games, they're happy. Most people would rather live in the dark than see what's really out there. Yep, and then when every time people act like that, you get a Nazi Germany or a Soviet tile deal because the criminals aren't going to stop grabbing. Uh, look, I've been asking a lot of the questions here. Uh, Staff Sergeant Joseph Biggs, uh, one of his best military buddies from all those years of being embedded over there, one of the, the, the only guy to release that he was, we wouldn't know that he was going into hiding. We wouldn't know they were death threatening him. We wouldn't know about the email because everybody had the email, but we're too afraid to release it. In the five minutes we've got left here with you, I want to give you the floor instead of me asking questions about other points you'd like to make or what you'd like to say to people out there, A, the cowards that are going along with this, and B, maybe those that were part of this, because I don't know how they think they're going to have a future in a country this corrupt. Well, I know whoever did this, you know, you got me to look forward to seeing. I'm going to definitely find out what's going on because I'm going to 
pull back those uh those band-aids i'm gonna dig into that scab and i'm gonna find out that dirt and i'm gonna come after him and bring that into the media as fast as i can whatever i can find out i will and um people need to uh help out i mean I need to find a lawyer down in L.A. that can actually give me some uh, legal advice on how we could take steps to get this information from the police. And it needs to be done fast. Um, well, they, the CIA has got uh, ice darts that have cyanide in them that basically dissipates and almost impossible to find in toxicology. They've got 101 ways on top of 101 to kill somebody nobody knows. They blew that up as a message to everybody. Sorry, go ahead. Keep going. No, no, you're good. No, it's just, I mean, everything you say makes me think of other things, uh, other points you'd like to make. Other than that, I just, I, I just, I, I'm getting scared the fact that people are just going to forget about this. We need to keep this, like, front page as much, as much as possible. People need to keep asking questions. I mean, not just me. Everyone should want to know what happened because it doesn't seem right. Everyone should have that that gut feeling in you that makes you a human being that wants to see the right thing done and to just ignore it and sweep it away. It just it makes me want to throw up. That's exactly how I feel. It, it, it makes you feel nauseous and it's like being smothered. It, and you're not even worried about getting killed or set up because all that matters is that we don't lay down because I'm telling you folks, if they can kill top reporters, investigative reporters worldwide, this guy wasn't just one of the biggest in the U S top three or four, probably worldwide, who they knew was real, you know, that, that, that speech I played uh, about a week before he got killed, he was on Young Turks, where he said, look, they're coming after the media, this is authoritarianism, we got to band together, and they've declared war on us, we got to declare war on them, and just put all the national security stuff out, the crimes they're committing, these are, he, he had found out how bad they really are, he'd had that moment of conscience that he was going to go all the way, and they blew him up. And, and the issue is that if they kill you, if they kill me, it becomes more and more obvious. This has happened a lot in history. All that matters is they're going to get taken down. If we all cower, then they're going to win and start killing whoever they want. Yeah, well, I'm not going to cower, I'll tell you that. I'll stand right in their face and tell them how it is. Well, they're cowards. They'll put a, another car bomb on you. But they probably aren't going to do that. I mean, he had something big for them to do that. And it was a message to the media you know, because uh, the media is not stupid. They know they k killed him. That's why Megan Kelly, I can't even look at her now, like laughing at you when you're on there like it's funny. This isn't funny. Even if you were wrong, your buddy's dead. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not too uh, keen on her anymore either. Well, look, man, I, as soon as you're gone in three or four minutes, uh, I'll have 10 questions that come in my head. I'm just flabbergasted at this point. Any other tidbits from the funeral? Anything else? That the uh, his widow said, you know, she said, "quote to you, I, I'm gonna find him and bring him down." W was that the quote? Oh, um, when, when she pulled me aside, she said, "You know, she's like, you know, I'm gonna do everything I can to find these guys and you know find out what happened." And uh, and I told her I would be there side by side to help her every step of the way. And I she gave me her email and I emailed her back later on after I gave her some time. And uh, we've spoken on the phone and texted a few times. And you know, she's. Trying to get an, or I think she might have an investigator now to help her out, and uh, she's doing a lot of things she can. Uh, my side is, I want to keep this as public as possible the whole time, so it's in the public eye, and I want people to every time they turn on the freaking TV or listen to the radio, someone's talking about it, so people are thinking about it because I'm just I can't sleep anymore. I stopped going to school for two weeks. I mean, I'm just I can't. It's completely. Uh, well, listen, get the rest you need and stuff and say clearly, they'll say, oh, he committed suicide. He was sad about his friend. You're on record. You're never going to commit suicide. Oh, God, no. Me neither. And uh, again, I don't drive 100 miles an hour. My car's not going to blow up. And I do not want my body cremated. I want a third party, two different autopsies. My, I'll, my family will pay for it. What about you? Yeah, I want people to see. I'm not afraid. <laughs> No, no, I hear you, but give people a living will. Let me tell you, they'll, they'll blow you up or me up and then cremate us. Oh, yeah, I've already got one of those done. I did one of those a few years ago. I'm sure you did. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. that's the great part, though. That's why they hate the veterans. I'm sure you've seen the Homeland Security documents where they say the veterans are the number one terror threat. That's even, you know, Washington Post. It's because they know veterans aren't afraid and have faced death, and they're afraid of men and women who are not cowards. Well, that and you just see all the shady stuff that goes on and you're just not willing to, you know, be quiet about it.
most people just hear about it, but to actually see a lot of this stuff. That's right. So you're not naive. You saw a lot of chicanery. Yeah. I mean, like I said before, I've been, I've been, I've been in vehicles that have blown up and, you know, thrown my vehicle 10 feet up in the air and completely demolished, you know, and I've got, you know, cuts all over my body and my vehicle at no time was in engulfed in the flames that were engulfed in that Mercedes Benz, which still just blows my mind. And they just want to shake it off and say no foul play. Well, I tell you, I'm sure looking down from heaven that uh, Michael appreciates you as a friend doing this. And it's important for the real media to continue to cover this. And it's important. I mean, I mean, at least we are getting some mainline TV stations to ask questions now. So it's not just you or I saying we've called and they won't give us the police report. Yeah, that's good, though, yeah. Man, how suspicious. We've been told not to talk. The body's disappeared, basically, and been cremated. And we're not going to give you a police report. One thing after another, but either way, every dirty little lie has got to come forth at some point. We'll find out. What's your gut tell you, uh, Staff Sergeant Joseph Biggs, what he had on the CIA or just no idea? Who knows what it was? I mean, I, I don't know exactly what it could be. I mean, it's kind of funny, all these things with Snowden that's happening. Who, who knows what he was going after? But, you know, someone probably got or you know, was a whistleblower, came forth to him, gave him some information. And uh, he probably followed one of those leads, you know, and it could have been like a CIA guy. It could be anybody. Who knows? Somebody with some kind of power like that. Well, I salute your courage, Staff Sergeant Biggs. We'll talk again soon. We'll, we'll keep this story alive. God bless you. Because there's a war on for your mind. That has been our motto here at InfoWars for my 18 years of battle against the globalist. And now we see the open announcements of global, private, corporate tyranny over our governments. That's what the New World Order is. It's an unaccountable private combine of organized crime engaged in corporate takeovers of nation states. And the conscious attempt to abolish basic rights and fundamental liberties. Infowars.com is not just leading the charge against this here in the U.S. or North America. We are leading the charge worldwide. And that's because our listeners, our viewers, our supporters, fellow freedom lovers like you across the planet resonate with our message of liberty and telling it like it is. And that's why for the last two years especially, I have thrown everything I've got, my time, my energy, our backup capital, everything into really trying to awaken the sleeping giant that is humanity. And that's why the July issue that just came in a few days ago is so important. We've already sold about half the stock we have of it at cost in groups of 10 up to 100 in bulk. It covers the entire NSA spy grid, how it ties in worldwide, how it's not about stopping terrorists, but about suppressing and dominating and controlling the free press and political opposition. And in this magazine, we don't just have three free bumper stickers like I did a few months ago. We have 10 bumper stickers, four full-size ones with amazing messages guaranteed to get people thinking like America has been occupied by globalist forces, Infowars.com. Listen to Alex Jones at Infowars.com. Infowars.com, forbidden information. Listen to Alex Jones, Infowars.com. And then on top of it, six medium-sized bumper stickers with the message as well. These are key to post in legal and lawful areas on your book bag, your computer, your car, or to give friends and family. I have printed 500,000 of these bumper stickers. Only half of this month's run of magazines has them. So when you purchase them in bulk or you're a 12-month subscriber, you will get the special issue. And I can't afford to do this every month, so it's going to be quite a while until we do this again. Please take advantage of this. Buy them in bulk and give them to your friends and family and encourage them to get these bumper stickers out because with 500,000 stickers, we can reach tens of millions of people with the message of truth. They want to collectivize us. They want to bankrupt us. They want to drive us into their arms to control us. They want to dumb us down. But the sleeping giant that is for humanity is awakening. So I want to thank you all for your support. I want to encourage everybody to go to InfoWarsStore.com and to get a 12-month subscription or to give a gift subscription. Imagine 12 of these coming to your friends or family's door to wake them up. Or to give a gift subscription to the local police department or your local congressman or woman. 
This is how we're going to affect change, voting with our dollars and voting with our time. Again, visit InfoWarsStore.com today to subscribe, to get the magazine in bulk, or to give a gift subscription, or to give yourself a subscription to Wake Up Friends and Family. I am all in. I am committed 110% to not mince words and to not back off and to boldly confront the globalist. And our listeners and supporters, our info warriors, who aren't behind us, they're right beside us. So I want to thank all of you that have supported us in the past, and I want to encourage all of you out there who may be on the fence, that know this information is true, but have been scared to take action. You had better be scared of not taking action and letting this monstrous system come to fruition. Now is the time to commit. Now is the time to say which side of history you're on. Now is the time to stand against the globalist and the New World Order. And regardless of whether you get this July issue, this July 4th resistance to tyrants issue, spread the word about liberty, resist corruption in your area. Millions of us doing little things can move mountains together. I'm Alex Jones signing off for InfoWars.com and the InfoWars team.